everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is Tinka. so today we're going to be making this kimono it is very simple easy to make you should be done in less than 30 minutes all right for this tie today we are going to be using four yards of silk fabric you can use crepe you can use duchess satin you can use chivon to make the style but this is a silk fabric they call it a buyer material here yeah, they call it a buyer material because it looks like what they usually use to make a buyer so that is what i'm going to be using today then you're going to be needing button you'll be needing elastic for the round arm and to create your uh button loop you can either use the same fabric to create the button loop or you use your bias to create the button loop usually i use um fringe I use fringe to create my button loop. That is what I usually use. It's just a regular fringe, you know. Fringe comes in different color. You can see this pink one. You can use any color that suits the color you are using. That's what I usually use. That's a little secret. But then you put it, people will be wondering, what did she use to create this loop? It to make your work to look like ready-made, you know, because they will not be able to figure out what you use. Don't tell them it's a secret. I use fringe to create my loop all right and uh, you can also use this thing this is called cord they call it piping cord to create it if i'm using small small buttons i usually use fringe to create my button loop you can also use this cord it's called by piping cord it is sold in the market it comes in different colors as well different different colors i'll just remove the the rope from the fringe this way can you see so i'm removing it just remove it then you're going to be using this to create your loop so i'll cut it to the size that will be enough for my button then this is what i'm going to be using to create my loop it's always very fancy let me know in the comment section if you have ever used fringe to create button loop i don't know it's just my thing so i don't know maybe another person is using it so all right so you only need two major measurements you need your you know from your center back to your desired sleeve length and also your length the length of the gown you are making and basically that's just all that you need for this tutorial today your center back to your desired sleeve length and the length of the gown is a free dress it's a free size it fits all like it's a free size so you don't need any circumference measurement all right so the next thing you have to do now from the fabric you're going to cut twice your length measurement i'm going to be measuring from my fabric i'm going to measure twice my gown length my total gown length is 60 inches so i'll measure that 60 inches two times then with my seam allowance so i'll measure 60 inches twice from my fabric 60 inches two times then with extra four inches for my seam allowance and then i'm going to cut this out out so this is twice my length measurement with extra four inches for my emmy allowance so the next thing i'm going to do is to fold the fabric into two your fabric into two this upper part is unfold then you fold it over again into four then you place it on your table so this part here is unfold. This part is unfold. Here also is unfold. This upper part is unfold. So the next thing you need to do is to measure and input your desired sleeve length. So you measure from your center back to your desired sleeve length. Mine, I'm going to be using 22 inches. I'm going to be using 22 inches. Because it's going to have elastic. Then I'm going to be adding extra 2 inches to it. For my elastic casing added extra two inches so from the top here i'm going to measure 14 inches downward from the top here i'll measure 14 inches downward then i'll roll it straight from my allowance all the way to that 14 inches point like this and from this point now i'll come in by two inches from this point i'll come in by two inches come in by two inches this way can you see like this then from here you roll it straight down to the hemline just roll it straight down to the hemline 
It's a free dress, doesn't have any shape so ever. So you, just, you can just create a curve to link them nicely. Can you see? Like that. So when you are cutting out, you cut out from here all the way here, then straight down to the hemline. So the next thing we are going to do now is to input our neckline. For the neck width, I'm going to be doing three and a half. So starting from this folded edge, I'll measure three and a half. Don't forget, this is your shoulder and here is unfold. This is your center front as well as your center back is unfold. So from the beginning here, measure three and a half for your neck width. For the back neckline, I'm going to be doing one inch. So from the top, I'll measure one inch downward. Then I'll connect it. Then the front neckline is a V neckline. So from the top, I'll measure 13 inches downward. 13 inches. Then from here, I'll connect it to that 13 inches point. If you don't want it to be too deep, if you don't want it to be too deep, you can do 12 inches or 10 inches for your neck depth. So first I'll cut on the back neckline and then I'll cut the side. Then I'll remove the inner piece that will be the back. Then I'll reshape the front neckline. So at first you're going to be cutting on the back neckline. You're going to be cutting on the back neckline first. This way. Can you see? You notch here. Just make a notch here at the side here like this. Create a notch. Just create a notch like that. So, so that by the time you remove the inner layer, you will know where the shoulder is. Next now is for us to cut here. I guess we're using this part to create the collar on the neck piece. So we are done cutting. We are going to be getting our color from these pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do now is for you to remove the inner layer. Pay attention to the way I'm going to remove it. You know we already notched the, the center here. So that by the time you remove it, you'll know the part that is the front. So just remove the inner layer this way. The way I'm going to show you like this. You know the fabric is folded into four. So remove the inner layer. And they are also joined together at the shoulder. Don't forget that. So remove the inner piece this way. So by the time you remove the inner piece, you have something like this. So you cut out the front neckline. You can see our shock for the front neckline. So cut the front neckline. So you cut the front neckline. Then you are going to be slitting the center front all the way down. You slit the center front all the way down. thing you're going to do now is for you before this thing with scatter you have to measure the neckline starting from the center back this this folded edge here at this point is your center back so from here you measure around the neckline all the way down to the hemline whatever you get you're going to be cutting a strip of fabric that measured that length so i'll go ahead i'll measure it so from the center back you measure this way all the way down all together here I have 68 inches all together starting from the center back leg like all the way down I have 68 inches and as you can see this is folded into two meaning you have you need 68 inches for the collar on one side and 68 inches for it at the other side don't forget this part here, this V shape, you are going to blend it well with the center so that it's not going to have any sharp edge. So just blend the V together very well, the way I've done here. 
So after measuring the neckline, I got 68 inches. So I'm going to cut another strip of fabric that measures 68 inches in length. Then the width is going to be 3 inches and I'll cut out 4. We need 2 for each of the side because it's a collar. You'll be using, one will be serving as lining for the other so you need to cut out 4. The length is going to be 68 inches and then the width is going to be 3 inches. So I'll cut a strip of fabric that measures 3 inches in width. 3 inches and then the length is going to be 68 and you'll cut out 4. I've cut the strip of fabric out. Uh, you can see I've cut uh, a strip of fabric that measure 3 inches in width the width is 3 inches and then the length is 68 inches and I, and I cut out 4 pieces I cut out 4 pieces I cut out 4 pieces so the next thing you have to do now is for you to determine where you want your button to stop you know if you if you want it to be buttoned down all the way, it's all good. If you want anywhere you want it to stop, it's also fine. Starting from where the neckline stop, you determine where you want your button to stop. So I'm going to be making mine starting from the neckline. I'll be measuring 35 inches downward. That is where my button will just stop. Then from here to here is where my buttons is going to be. So I will have to determine that also from my collar. So I'll take one pieces of the collar this way. I'll take one piece of the collar this way. Then starting from the front center back, I'll mash it together like this so that I can know where those points is going to fall on the on this piece of fabric. So it's starting here. So I'll make a mark here now. This is where one button will start. Mm, like this then i'll continue till i get to where i mark for where the button stuff is going to stop this is another point okay so now this is what we have uh, we already mark where our button loops is going to be the distance is going to be from here to this point half button loop from this point to this point I make the distance of my button to be four four inches apart, four inches. So I'll just measure four four inches this way. So this point that I'm marking is where my button loop is going to be. So I've marked the position of my button loop. I've marked the position of my button loop. So I'll bring my button loop. Like I said, you can use, either use bias to create your button loop or you or you, you cut out piece of fabric that you are going to be using. So the width of the button of the, of the loop can be, if you are using your fabric, just cut out a strip of fabric that measure one and a half in width. Then the length can be two, two inches apart. So you fold it into two and just make a stitch, then you use it to create the button loop. But I'm going to be using this as my button loop. So I'm going to be cutting this into two two inches. So I'll cut it into two two inches, so that I can use it to create my button loop. I'll use this to create button loop. So I'll just fold it the way. See the way I folded it. I'll place it on all my short line. I'll place it and I'll stitch, stitch it down all the way till I exhaust the line that I have on the on the strip of fabric. So I'll fold the piece into two this way. I'll place it on top of my line this way. And I'll stitch on it like this. So I'll go ahead, I'll create my button loop like so.
so i'm done stitching the loop on it can you see i don't know if you can see it so the next thing you do now is to take another one you're going to be joining together right side to right side place it on top of it like this then you join here together this is going to be your center, center You have to join the remaining two the same way. Match the two of them together like this, and then you join. You take the other one, you place it on top of it right side to right side let the joining align at the center like this see the way it is then you are going to stitch this part together with half inch from the beginning all the way to the end all right you can see the way it is so this is going to serve as the lining so you stitch it together You sew to the left of the joining and you also sew to the right. I'm done ironing it. So before attaching the collar, this is how our kimono is looking. This is how our kimono is looking. If you put it on your neckline. So if you put the kimono on your neckline, this is how it is. Can you see? before attaching the collar so the next thing you have to do now is to attach your collar the center of the joining for the collar you're going to match it with the center back so this is my center back here i'm going to notch it you notch it like this then you can see our collar we already fold it into two can you see it's already folded into two with iron and fold it into two so you match the joining at the center of the collar together with the center of the back neckline so open it up open your kimono up this way then you place the collar right on top of it this way right side to right side then you are going to stitch the collar together Starting from the center of the back neckline, you stitch together all the way down to the hemline on one side. Then when you are done, you turn to the other side. Then from the center back again, you join together all the way down to the hemline. So I'll be doing that. And you are going to join together with half inch allowance all the way down. So I'm done attaching the collar to the neckline and I've weaved it can see I've weaved it all the way from beginning to the end so the next thing now is to finish the sleeve so you're going to be aiming your sleeve opening so this is my sleeve opening here this is my sleeve opening I'll fold it two times first fold half inch in and then you fold again like this and then you're going to make your stitch you create elastic Chanel then you do the same thing to the second side. So you're going to be aiming the sleeve opening. First fold half inch in and then you fold again so that you can create elastic casing. Ah, I think this is the most difficult fabric I've ever worked with. It's so slippery. It is so slippery. So you create your elastic casing at uh, the sleeve. Okay. 
when you're done with one side you also do the second side when you're done you're going to be inserting elastic into the sleeve round so just wrap your elastic around around here then you cut out two this way So when you are done inserting the elastic to the channel, so when you are done inserting the elastic to the sleeve, you are going to be closing the side with one inch allowance. So you close the side all the way down with one inch seam allowance, all the way down with one inch seam allowance. So you are going to be closing the side all the way down with one inch allowance. So lastly, you're going to be aiming the bottom part of your dress. And yeah, that will be the end of the class for today. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please kindly subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.